Welcome back to part 14 of my 1 to 60 alliance leveling guide. When we left off, we were grinding on Feathermoon Isle to 45. So once you are level 45 and have 285 cooking, let's continue with the guide. As you should already have the quests in Feralis gathered from the last part, we'll start by swimming east towards Feralis. When you arrive, ride up to the main road and then start going south. Just as the road is going east, jump off the road and go south into the wilderness where we will head towards the Yeti Cave. It's important to note that we want to be 46 by the time we finish these quests in Feralis and they will not ding you by themselves. So grind excessively on the wildlife as you move through Feralis. Once you reach the Yeti Cave, start killing the Yetis for the quest The Mark of Quality where we'll need 10 thick Yeti hides. The Yeti come with multiple types. It's important to know that the Yetis in the cave, the enraged Feral Scar Yetis, will enrage when you get them low HP and they hit very hard. They will very easily kill you if you don't prepare for it. You can sweeping strikes and kill the normal yetis outside, but be very wary of the higher level enraged ones inside. Now from all that grinding you did in Feathermoon Isle, you should have gotten a beacon that started the quest Find OOX 22 FE. The turn in for that beacon is just inside the yeti cave so turn that in but don't take the follow up while you are here. It's an escort quest that'll wreck us right now. I'll go more into detail about the chicken escorts later but for now just turn in the beacon. If the beacon isn't up, kill around until the chicken respawns. It's a common bug that this chicken doesn't respawn. If this happens you're probably going to need to message a GM. Hopefully this doesn't happen on classic. Once you've finished with the Yeti and complete the quest The Mark of Quality, we will be heading east. Kill your way through the wildlife until you reach the ruins of Isildian. Here, we need two things. First, we want to kill the ogres for the quest The High Wilderness. The brutes are mainly on the north, the shamans south, and the warlocks are kind of mixed around. There's a lot of ogres around that we don't need for the quest, but we're hurting for experience, so don't be scared about grinding on them a little bit. You need to pay attention to these though. These ogres hurt, and while we can't double pull them, we need to be full HP or full rage or risk dying. The casters need to be interrupted. Pretty much from here on in the guide as a warrior, you don't really get to check out mentally as you level. Every fight can get you killed if you don't pay attention. So utilize hamstring kiting and your kit to the fullest to get the ogres that you need. While you are clearing through Feralis, you should keep in mind with these ogres that we are going to need 15 silk for an upcoming quest. So if you don't have 15 silk saved on your mailing all or in your bags, Make sure you try to gather some here as it will get progressively harder to get it in the next zones and we need it pretty damn soon. If you do get 15 silk, keep it in your bags and don't accidentally vendor it or turn it into bandages. Our second objective is south of the ruins. We want to grab an egg from the southern mountains. The easiest way to get the hippogriff eggs is through the ruins to avoid the annoying hippogriffs themselves. Clear to the large structure in the south and go up the ramp. Hug the east side of the ramp to avoid aggroing the ogre camps below it. Once you get to the top of the large temple ruin, kill the ogres in your path and go around the outside of the temple on the west side until you reach the back on your mount. You can jump off the back of the temple and go straight south into the mountains. 
You'll find narrow pathways up the cliffs that should lead to some hippogriff nests. Loot from the nests a hippogriff egg. This is a quest item we need to hold on to. It doesn't actually have a quest, but at level 48, a quest in Tanaris becomes available where we can turn this in for free experience. So don't destroy it. Once you have one egg, go back to the temple and then ride back north through the ogres. Kill any remaining that you need to finish the high wilderness. Then head to the main road of Feralis North. Follow the road east until you cross the river over a stone bridge. From here, you should be able to hop off the road north into a small valley with friendly sprite darters. Go through them to the east, and next to a big tree, you should find a sneaky little ramp that overlooks the Grim Totem Camp with two night elves on it, each of them having their own quest. One of the quests is a weird escort we don't want to take yet, so first accept the quest Doling Justice from the Standing Night Elf, then go back down the ramp and start killing the Grim Totems. We need to kill quite a few for the quest, and some are harder to find than others, so first let's prioritize the weird escort. When we start that escort quest, we will have 5 minutes to open the large cage on the western end of the totem camp, and then hope that enough sprite darters escape to complete the quest. The night elf will follow us and help us on this task, but it's easier for us to kill all the grim totem around the cage first and then start the escort. Killing these grim totems can be tricky, they all have pretty annoying abilities, they're easier than the ogres, but just pay attention to what type you are fighting and what they can do. The raiders like to net. The naturalists will turn into bears and are a bit tanky. And the shamans will heal and need to be interrupted. Keep note that while we need 12 naturalists, they're also the hardest to find, so you'll need to be grinding here for a bit to wait for their respawns to get the 12 that you need. So anytime you see a naturalist, you should go out of your way to target them first with higher priority than the others. Be wary of the fleeing mechanic as they are tightly packed, and because of their nets and heals, it's hard for us to deal with too many of them. Once the cage is cleared too, go back up the ramp and start the escort Freedom for All Creatures. Then quickly run around to the front of the cage and open it. You can use the fleeing sprite darters to help you kill some grim totem and try to save the sprite darters, but if you've cleared around the cage you'll very likely finish this quest easily. Then keep killing the grim totem until you finish the quest doling justice. Once you have both of them done, run up the ramp and turn them both in and accept the follow-up quest to Doling Justice. Hello. Good luck. Then make your way back to the main road and follow it east. When the road opens up to the south with some big bodies of water, head south around them. Grind your way through the wilderness into the lower wilds until you start seeing gnolls. Our target is the quest to the Woodpall gnolls. This quest simply wants us to loot a satchel that's hanging on the side of a tree in one of the gnoll camps. Not enough rage. 
Find the correct null camp by looking for a giant tree with a bag pinned onto it. Then start clearing that camp to get to the bag. Some of the gnolls will be green, all of them will flee, and like the grim totem, they all have unique abilities, some of them are really annoying. You just don't want to mess with the gnolls, you don't want to be here longer than you need to as a warrior. So just get to the satchel and interact with it as soon as possible. Turn in the quest the woodpaw gnolls and loot the undelivered parcel while accepting the quest the writhing deep. The item itself, the undelivered parcel, has its own quest tied to it, so use it to get the quest Thalinar Delivery. Then head south around the knoll camps until you start seeing Silithid. We need to clear into the hive through the southernmost tunnel, but the Silithid mobs are pretty tanky, so kill them one by one and make your way inside. Take it slow and keep your HP up between the poles to avoid any deaths. Inside the hive we need to get all the way to the end of it. Be cautious of the patrols and around some bends you may be forced to double pull, so keep your rage up for these situations and you shouldn't have trouble getting to the last room of the hive. The last round room has several bugs in it, but they are far enough apart to single pull, so clear it until you can get to the middle of the room safely. Then beat up the Zook Ash pod in the middle and turn in the quest The Writhing Deep and accept Freed from the Hive. This is a weird escort where the NPC doesn't move, so just wait a bit until he finishes his RP to complete the quest. Then it's time for us to clear our asses back to the main road. This can take a bit, getting out of the hive and then going back through the knolls, but like I said, we need to grind soon in a bit anyway, so take your time and clear your way back to the road. When you reach the road, ride east towards Thalinar. You should remember Thalinar from level 32 when we got a flight path at the border of Thousand Needles and Feralis. When you get there, turn in Thalinar delivery. Then fly back to Feather Moon Stronghold. What brings you here? Farewell. In Feather Moon, start by turning in the Mark of Quality. You don't need the follow up yet. Then go to the Eastern House and turn in the High Wilderness and Freed from the Hive and accept a hero's welcome. You can then turn that in inside the Western Lodge and accept the follow-up Rise of the Silithid. The innkeeper should also have a quest, Joan Spire's request. Take it and go up the big tree and turn it in for a bit more experience, but don't take the follow-up.
Now, are you level 46? No? Me either. I also haven't trained skill since 42, but in the name of efficiency, we want to grind our butts off once more until we get two bubbles away from level 46. We have some big chunks of experience waiting for us in Darnassus that'll finish the level for us, so you're likely looking at one hour to a one and a half hour grind back on the Nagas and Wolves. Good luck, have fun, I'll see you in a little bit. And we're back! That was fast! Great job! Time to fly to Rutheran Village in Teldrassil, aka Darnassus. Way, way in the north. When you land in Rutheran, head to the only building there. Inside, accept the quest Favorite of a Loon on the first floor, and upstairs, turn in the quest Search of Knowledge. Take the follow-up and go to the back to loot the green book. Turn it in for Feralis a history. And turn that in for the quest The Borrower. Then go through the mystical purple light of the Druid Secretion to get into Darnassus. Our first stop here will be the Temple of the Moon, south. Go inside and then go upstairs to turn in the quest Rise of the Silithid. And then turn in Doling Justice. And by my calculations, that ought to ding you to 46. So let's go train our level 46 skills, unless you're a warlock or a mage or a paladin, hashtag get wrecked. As we have no major gold sinks anymore, you can go willy nilly with training your abilities now. Then it'll be hearthing time back to Booty Bay. You should know by now that I hate cross-continental boats, so I save my hearths to counteract them, but I'm sure there's probably more efficient ways, but screw it, we're in Booty Bay now. Immediately turn in back to Booty Bay, and from the same goblin take the quest Zanzil's Secret. Then go upstairs and accept the final Bloodsail Buccaneers quest from the Torin. What brings you here? Then go into McKinley's hut behind the big fish and take the quest of Voodoo Doos. You should also still have Raptor Mastery and Whiskey Slim's Lost Grog, and that should be all the quests you have from STV. So with all that, let's head north out of Booty Bay. This is also the final warning alert for Stranglethorn Vale pages. If you don't get them now, we will not bother with it, but the boot rewards are plate and with strength, so try to get them. Now our first destination out of Booty Bay will be east to the Bloodsail Coast, and we will need Retaliate soon, so don't use it until I say so. Make your way down the shore towards the three big boats. First things first, as we are clearing around these boats, we need to keep an eye out for a scroll that spawns randomly on these boats and on the islands near the boats, inside the small rowboats as well. The scroll gives a quest chain that is super easy and rewards a 14 slot bag. So to deal with this, we will fully search each island and fully clear each boat until you get the quest. Let's start by the first ship on the wild shore, the eastmost one. Most of the mobs here are green, but the boats are clustered, so get aboard and clear the deck cautiously. Avoid using charge here, instead shoot or proximity aggro and then use line of sight to pull them back and kill them. The Blood Sail Magus' spells hurt, so try to interrupt them, but aside from that, the major threat to your life is just getting too many adds, as some mobs will bug out and aggro around corners and walls and it's difficult to see them. Clear down the stairs to the first floor and build up rage on one of the mobs here. In each of these three ships we're about to clear, the captains are in the exact same location, in the room just under the stairs of it. For the first ship here, we have Captain Stillwater. He'll spawn with a Magus and he himself spams slow and arcane missiles. You want to try to front load your damage with sweeping strikes to kill the Magus fast, 
as once you get slowed your kill speed dips a lot, but overall he's the easiest of the three. Once he's dead, search the ship for the riddle and then go overboard and head west to the other two ships. For the next two ships, we'll start with the easternmost one. It's more of the same, but this ship houses the Fleet Master, and near him, another named mob, Iron Patch. It was for these guys we were saving Retaliate, because the pull consists of three mobs, and the level 48 Fleet Master hits hard, but he also hits fast, so Retaliate can make quick work of it. Without Retaliate, this fight is very hard. Once you get him down, again check the boat for the riddle unless you have it already, then move to the last ship. This one houses Captain Keelhaul. He uses ranged shots if you let him and demo shout, but he's pretty damn easy. Clear the ship after for the riddle, and once you find it, take the quest from the riddle, Cortello's Riddle. As long as you respect the fleeing mechanics, you should pull this off without any deaths, so when all three are dead and you have Cortello's riddle quest, we'll head back to the coast. And then go towards the main road. Keep in mind we need retaliate again soon, so don't use it. Make your way north to the Gurubashi gates. When you get through the Gurubashi gates, just off the right of the road you should find the ruins of Jubawal. We need to kill two named mobs here and loot Zanzil's mixture off the undead, so we'll prioritize the named mobs. The first one is John John the Crow. He spawns near the campfire on the southern side of the ruins. He will always aggro with one add, and these named guys can hit pretty hard. So build up rage first before you pull the two. And then pop sweeping strikes and cleave them down fast. When you get John John's spyglass, clear to the ruined building on the north side of the ruins, where we will find the other named mob, but inside is a large pole of three enemies, so as you clear to it, make sure you keep your rage built up in preparation for the three man pole. Also note though, on a PvP server, because this area is right on the road, it's very common for PvP to break out here, so be on your toes as you clear this ruin. When you have access to the three man pole inside, with a full rage bar, charge in and focus fire Maori so that if things go south you'll at least get the quest objective here done. With both Maori and John John dead with their quest items in bags, we're going to go south a bit. Don't worry about finishing Zanzil's mixture yet here. Just south of these ruins, the road opens up eastward through the mountains. Mount up and run through to avoid the Elder Shadowmont Panthers that are stealthed here.
and you should quickly reach the ruins of Aboraz on the coast. Here is where we will finish Zanzil's secret and find Chucky to finish the quest Voodoo Doos. Start by going for Chucky. He spawns on the northeast side of the ruins just against the outer wall. It's better to avoid clearing through the ruins themselves because of the elite troll Zanzil that's inside and the clustered mobs as well. So instead, let's clear around the outside and on the beach until you find a clean pull of Chucky with one ad. He'll always come with that one ad, but that's nothing we can't handle with sweeping strikes. We did have a chance to do these quests at 43, but it's way easier as a warrior to just do them at 46 because as you can see, all of these pulls are pretty big and they can be tough if you're too low level. Once you killed Shucky, finish off killing the zombies until you get the 12 Zanzil mixtures for Zanzil's secret, then you should have both the quests finished. When you are done, we will go back to the main road. Our next target is Tethys, so go just west of the road once you reach it, back to where we went for Raptor Mastery. You should still have the follow-up of Raptor Mastery to kill Tethys. If you do not, you can go grab it from Nessingwari first, otherwise head into the Raptors. Tethys spawns in a random location around the raptors just west of the Gurubashi arena, so the first step here is to clear around until you find him. The second step is once you find him, to clear the space around Tethys so we can hamstring kite him. Tethys is soloable now at 46. He is hard for the same reasons that the elite crocodile was hard in the previous part of the guide. He can slow us, and for this reason, try to apply hamstring using intercept and don't use rent. If you get slowed, you can use intimidating shout to wait out the slow. We can handle tanking him for a bit, especially if you bandage early, but sitting through two of his slows in a row will make you lose the fight. Still, do not use retaliate here. We need it for Bangladesh in a moment. Once he's dead, loot his talent and then ride back to the Nessingwari camp. Turn in Raptor Mastery and turn in your Green Hills pages and accept the last Nessingwari quest, Big Game Hunter. Big Game Hunter is basically our last Stranglethorn Veil vale quest. This means if you don't get the Green Hills pages now, they are worthless to you. So it's your last chance to trade for missing pages in chat if you still haven't gotten some. But with the Big Game Hunter quest in hand, head back south. Our target is the area around the Tigresses we used to farm for our mount, right in the middle of STV along the road. Now Bangladesh can spawn in a few locations, all around these tigers usually, but it's hard to confirm because private servers have him always spawn in the same spot, so you may need to search around a little bit for him. 
When you do find him, build up rage beforehand and prepare for a pretty tricky fight. For Bangladesh here, I got cocky and I almost died. Don't copy me, handle the fight as so. Hamstring kite Bangladesh down until he is roughly at 60% HP, because at 50% he will summon two panther adds and the fight gets hard to solo. You have two options to deal with the panther adds. You can first intimidating shout him at 60% and then fully bandage yourself to full HP and then get him below 50% and use retaliate for the last half of the fight. This will make him and his adds kill themselves fast and it is the safest method. You can also save intimidating shout and use it for the adds and still pop retaliate to just burn him down fast at the last 50%. Or you can be an idiot like me, don't intimidating shout at all and rely completely on retaliate and sweeping strikes to kill Bangladesh and his ads. I recommend method 1, as a 30 minute cooldown on retaliate you really don't want to mess up or you won't be able to kill him for 30 minutes without help. Once you get his head, ride back to the Nessingwari camp and turn in big game hunter. Clear your bags and rid yourself of the Green Hills pages now unless you want to auction house them if you didn't get the quest done. Then ride north out of Stranglethorn Vale towards Darkshire. When you get to Darkshire, we will fly to Stormwind. When you land in Stormwind, start by going to the Mage Quarter. Now we're about to need that 15 silk, so make sure you have it on hand and get it from your mailing alt or your bank, or get some off the auction house if you are not able to collect it. Our target is the actual Mage Tower, so climb to the top. Outside the portal, take the quest Vital Supplies, then go through the portal. Talk to the Mage Trainer and take the quest Tabitha's Task. You can also stop by the tavern down here for a free quest, Moist Towelette. It gives no experience, but it's still a cool item to have. Good day to you. Then we will go to the Dwarven District. Head into the Dwarven Tavern, and just inside, take the quest In Search of the Temple. You can also train your brains out if you haven't yet in Darnassus. A secondary note, we're going to run through Badlands in a moment. This is your second and last chance to do the crafting item quests, so if you didn't do them, you can check the auction house for Frost Oil, or a Gyro Cornatum, or a Pattern Bronze Bracers, or Healing Pot and Lesser Invisibility Pot. Then, we will be flying to Thelsamar Lochmodan. When you land, mount up and run southeast into Badlands. In Badlands, go straight west, but as you pass Lotwill, do any turn ins that you missed and then continue southwest around the mountain until you get to Searing Gorge. Just south of the entrance of Searing Gorge, we'll find the Grim Silt dig site. Our target is the outhouse on the mountain on the south side, so circle around the outside and get up to the mountain and kill the annoying golems in your way around the outhouse. Talk to the outhouse and take the quest Caught. For this quest, we need that 15 silk and to kill 8 geologists. There are exactly 8 geologists that spawn in Searing Gorge. Some are in the dig site and some are in the camp way north. 
You can kill all of them individually or wait for their respawns. Clearing the dig site is pretty tricky. It's a lot of double pulls and mobs with ranged attacks. We can handle two of anything here, but three it gets iffy, and the war golems have high armor and are immune to bleed, so avoid them as much as possible. You'll also see an escort at the bottom of the dig site, but we can't do this yet, it's too hard at this level, so don't worry about that. It's faster to clear the northern camp than wait for the dig site geologists to respawn. So once you kill them all in the dig site, ride north to the camp way on the north side of Searing Gorge. Kill the geologists here until you have all eight. Then go back to the outhouse. At the outhouse, turn in the quest Caught and accept the follow-up, Ledger from Tanaris. The moment you accept the quest, a book will spawn outside the outhouse. Make sure you loot it for the gold steel ledger, which we need for the quest. Then go southwest and start killing glass web spiders. The spiders drop solid crystal leg shafts we need for the quest as well. We need a lot of them, but spiders usually drop multiple, and there are a lot of spiders that spawn over a large area so grind on them until you get the 20 legs you need. The only thing notable is that they do an annoying web ability. Once you've got all 20, ride north around the mountain, then west towards Thorium Point. When you find the path up to Thorium Point, go up and grab the Alliance Flight Path. Then we will be flying to Darkshire in Duskwood. It may feel a bit tedious to come here now just for one quest, but the quest gives a lot of experience and we needed to get the Thorium Point flight path eventually anyway, so it saves us time later. When you land in Darkshire, run south a bit to turn in the quest Vital Supplies and accept the follow-up Supplies for Netherguard. Then we will ride east into Deadwind Pass. And continue on into Swamp of Sorrows. Follow the road until you reach a weird unique looking bridge. Under the bridge on the eastmost side, you should find under the water a soggy scroll. Interact with it to turn in the quest Cortello's Riddle and accept the follow-up. Then continue east. Our next target is the big lake in the middle of the swamp. All we have to do here is swim in the water a bit to complete the quest in search of the temple. Avoid the elite green dragons as you do it. and then get back on land and ride to the coast. Right in the very middle of the coast around where the murlocs start appearing, you should find a named murloc named Jarkoai, just beside the dead turtle. You can get revenge on these murlocs by killing him and loot him for gold steel's balanced flameberg.
then hearth back to Booty Bay. In Booty Bay, turn in Zanzil's Mixture and accept the new follow-up, Zanzil's Mixture and a Fool Stout. This quest has a two-hour timer, but don't even worry about it. We'll get it done without any trouble. Then go up to the tavern and turn in Bloodsail Buccaneers. Be careful. Then lastly, in the McKinley House, turn in Voodoo Dues, but don't take the follow-up. Then we will run to catch the boat in Ratchet. Now's a good time to mention, on a PvP server, just as the boat is leaving, a common griefing tactic is to fear people off the boat or sap them. So always sit in Berserker Stance when you wait for boats so you can Zerker Rage as needed. In Ratchet, take the flight to Theramore in Dustwallow. <laughs> when you get to Theramore, run right into the water west of the island and swim across the bay towards Zeppelin crash site. Getting ashore west is tricky, there are very few paths that allow you out of the bay on the west side. The easiest one is right around the bend when the land curves. So find the way through the mountains to Bezel's Wreck. Near the back of the wrecked Zeppelin, loot the damaged crate for the overdue package. Then we will ride straight west. There is no clear marker for it, but we need to find a house that is hidden in the middle of the swamp. Mages and warlocks will be already very familiar with this place. When you find the house, go inside and turn in Tabitha's task and accept the follow-up Tiara of the Deep. Light bless you. Then continue west. Our target is a cave in the Bloodfen Barrow. It's right on the edge of Dustwallow. Clear through the Bloodfen Lashtail Raptors to get inside the cave. Then clear to the back of the cave. They're level 41, so this shouldn't take you very long. Inside the back of the cave, you'll find sitting on a rock another scroll. Talk to it to turn in Cortella's riddle and then accept the follow-up. And that's all we need in Dustwallow. So make the long run and swim back to Theramore Isle. While you are in Theramore, don't forget to train your first aid if you can, then fly to Gadget's End in Tanaris. Well when you land, we've got some footwork to do. On the north side, talk to the gnome and turn in the quest of the borrower and accept Super Snapper FX. On the east side, except from the two goblins, Water Pouch Bounty and Waste Wander Justice. Then talk to the Wanted posters for Wanted Caliph Scorpid Sting and Wanted Andre Firebeard. 
Also turn in the ledger from Tanaris. This quest commonly bugs on private servers and can't be turned in, so yeah. Come on, classic summer 2019. Woohoo! Once you've got all the quests, run north into Shimmering Flats to the Mirage Raceway. Turn in the quest Zanzo's Mixture and a Fool Stout to ditch the timer and accept Get the Gnomes or Goblins Drunk and turn that in. Then talk to Cravel again for the quest. Then on the east side, talk to the goblin and turn in safety first. Then we will go back to Gadget Zan. Use the bank and vendors here to clear up your bags. Then make your way east out of Gadget Zan. Continue east on the road until you reach Steam Weedle Port. In the southern house, take the quest South Sea Shakedown and Stoli's Shipment. Then on the north side, accept pirate hats ahoy and turn in creature spirits for the prophecy of Masharu. You can also check the vendor again for the clam recipe if you didn't hey, get it. How you doing? Then let's get to work. Whew, that's a lot of travel. All right, head southwest into the desert until you start finding waste wander mobs. They spawn over a large area and are popular for mages to AoE grind. We need 10 thieves and 10 bandits, but in addition, we also want 5 waste wander pouches. If you get more, they give us free food and water for every 5 we get and goblin rep, but only the first 5 will give you experience. The waste wanders for this quest are pretty easy. The only two things to note is that the thieves disarm and they spawn in big clusters, but you should be fine clearing 2 to 3 as long as you use hamstring on the disarm. When you complete Waste Wander Justice, we will head right back to Gadget Zen. In Gadget Zen, turn in Waste Wander Justice and accept the follow up more Waste Wander Justice, and also turn in any water pouches for water pouch bounty if you can. What's up? Hey, how you doing? Keep it real. Then head east back towards the Waste Wanders. This time we will go further south to find a different type of waste wander. We need 8 rogues, 6 assassins, and 10 shadow mages. In addition, roaming around the desert is a named mob, Caliph Storpidsting. So keep an eye out for him, or make a target macro to find him. He patrols over a large area so he can take a while to find as you kill these mobs. These ones are higher level and a bit harder. The camps are deceptive because the rogues spawn stealth. We can't see them until we aggro them. So keep your HP up and build up rage on obvious single pulls so you're prepared for double pulls that you might accidentally get. Try to avoid using retaliate as we could really use it to help us with Caliph when we finally find him. The rogue stealth sucks, the assassin's damage sucks, and the shadow mages and their pets suck, but you can stop them from casting. Just take it slow and you should be able to get the mobs you need to complete more Waste Wander Justice. <sighs> then all that will be left is to hunt down Caliph, Scorpid Sting. So run around with a target Caliph macro until you find him patrolling the desert. 
Caliph himself is easy. The hard part is the two stealth rogues walking behind him. At this level, you can use Retaliate for them, or use Intimidating Shout, or just burst Caliph down and leech the rogues. All of it should work fine. I got lucky in that Caliph respawned before his rogues did from someone else killing him so I could pick him off solo. When both quests are done, run further east towards the coast. On the south side of Wave Strider Beach, you'll find a mountain with a cave going through the northern side of it. Go through the cave to reach Lost Rigger Cove. In Lost Rigger Cove, we've got four quests to do here. The first is Pirate Hats Ahoy. It's a drop off of any of the mobs, so this quest should complete itself without us paying much attention to it. The second quest is South Sea Shakedown. It needs us to kill 40 mobs, 10 of 4 different types. They spawn in generalized locations. The pirates are mainly outside the pirate base with the freebooters. The swashbucklers spawn in the buildings or around the eastern docks. And the dock workers spawn in the half-built ship or around the camp. As you are killing them, let's put a focus on the other two quests, starting with the quest Dolly Shipment. For this quest, we need a crate that's inside the northernmost building. However, to get to it, we need to deal with some big pulls of swashbucklers, and the swashbucklers like to disarm, which makes this pretty hard for us. Clear the outside of the building and build up rage beforehand, then take the first pull inside, which will be a double pull, and sweeping strikes them down. The next pull is a solo inside the building to build up rage, because once you get into the room up the stairs inside, you'll be hit with a pull of three disarming swashbucklers. You can use sweeping strikes and intimidating shout and hamstring kite. It's really hard to pull off, but if you play smart, you can manage killing all three. Then you can head up to the top floor and loot Stoli's shipment, and then head back outside. The last quest is Wanted, Andre Firebeard. He spawns right in the middle with a group of pirates nearby, around the campfire. If you pull them by shooting Andre, you'll only get two ads of dock workers. Unlike the swashbucklers, they don't disarm so they're way easier to manage and you can cleave them down by building up raids beforehand. Just make sure the area around you is clear so you have room to move and you don't get too many adds from the fleeing mechanic that all of these pirates have. As you kill them, you'll start getting these locker things that have pirate maps in them as well. If you get three, it can be used for a quest. The quest is repeatable, it gives no experience, it's very hard, and is in the middle of nowhere. The only reason it's worth doing is it rewards three green items for each map you have on you. So it's great for re-gearing or leveling enchanting, but will not bother with it. Ditch the map parts or vendor them. When you finish the four quests, run out of the cove and go back north to Steamweed. Turn in Wanted, Andre Firebeard, South Sea Shakedown, then Stoli Shipment. Take the follow-up delivery to McKinley, and on the north side, turn in Pirate Hats Ahoy. Interesting. Then make your way east to Gadget's End. In Gadget's End, turn in more Waste Wander Justice and Wanted Caliph Scorpid Stings and any extra p water pouches that you have. You should be level 37 now, or over 37. If you aren't, you'll need to grind a bit on the Waste Wanders before you continue. But otherwise, hearth back to Booty Bay. 
in Booty Bay, turn in report back to Fizzlebub right next to you and make sure you have the quest nearby Whiskey Slim's Lost Grog. Then go to McKinley's house and turn in delivery to McKinley. Clear up your bags as needed and then head up to the flight master. And next we will be flying to Stormwind City. You got my attention. Watch your back. And that's it for this part of the guide. I'll see you guys in Stormwind in part 15 of this leveling guide, but until then I am booping out.